We're now going to revisit our shrinking circle demo that we had before, enlarging and shrinking circle. But this time we're going to go all out. Not only are we going to have buttons to shrink it and enlarge it, but we're also going to be able to use the mouse and the keyboard to do it. So we're going to have to monitor mouse events, key events, and button clicks or button events as well. We have the usual imports that we need. Things are a little wee bit different here. We extend application with our demo and we still have to override the start method. But right here you'll notice that we've inserted a private data member into our demo class and it is a circle pane that's defined down below. Well actually in a separate class. Now we've already seen it but it wouldn't hurt to review it one more time really quick so let's do that now. Here is what the circle pane looks like. It's essentially just a stack pane with a circle in it. So we extend the stack pane class and then we have a private uh, circle that we make here as a data member and we effectively drop it into the, um, to the stack pane. The nice advantage of taking this approach is that stack panes always center whatever we drop into them. So we're going to get the circle centered automatically as a result of this. It's in here that we're going to also provide the methods that are going to make the circle get bigger and get smaller. So we have an enlarge method for the circle and we have a shrink method for the circle. So now we saw that before, so this was just review. So let's go on to the new material here. We're still going to have the same two buttons we had before for enlarging and shrinking. And the code to do that is the same as you saw it before, so we don't need to review that again. Here it is in the blue section. Let's scroll down and look at what we need to add to get the additional features. This is also code that you've already seen right here to associate listeners, event listeners, to the clicking of the buttons. So again, we don't need to review that. It's also old news that we use an H box to contain the two buttons and that we use a border pane to contain all of our objects. We throw the H box containing the two buttons in the bottom section of the border pane and we're going to set our circle in the center. And remember the circle is already in a stack pane which is going to center the circle within that stack pane and now we're dropping that inside of the center portion of the border pane in turn. But again this is all stuff we looked at before. And of course this bit down at the bottom where we ultimately drop our border pane into the scene and put an uh, appropriate title on the window and set the scene in the stage and show the stage, that's all old stuff too. So really the new things that we're adding are all down here in this section. So we already have the buttons that are going to enlarge and uh, shrink the circle as before, so nothing new there. But now, so that we can have mouse events also control it, we're going to associate with the circle pane a set on mouse clicked listener. And we're using the lambda notation that you're now familiar with. And then we're providing code for the listener, which occurs right here. It consists of a single if statement. And that if statement checks, now that we know we're in here, we know that the mouse was clicked, we just want to know which button was clicked. So we check using the get button method to see if the button was the primary button, in other words the left button. If it was then we're going to enlarge the circle. Otherwise we check to see if it was the other button, the secondary button, the right button. And if it was the right button then we're going to shrink the circle. Now down at the bottom we have the code to respond to presses of keys. So if the scene has a key pressed on it. So we do scene.set on key pressed and again lambda notation and the listener uh, does the following. If and then we invoke the get code method on the event object and we compare that against the constant key code dot up. So in other words we're checking to see if the up arrow was pressed. If it was then this will be true and we will call the circle pane dot enlarge method to make the circle bigger. Else we check to see if the down arrow was pressed. 
and if it was, then we're going to go ahead and shrink the circle instead. And that completes an overview of the code associated with this demo. There is something interesting that's going to happen though when I demonstrate this. We're going to actually show a couple of interesting things. One of them is what happens when I push the left and right arrows and the tab key. And it's something that might be a bit unexpected, especially since if you look through the code we haven't done anything with the left and right arrow and the tab key. But some of these things we get for free in Java FX as you're going to see. So let's go ahead and run the demo. And here it is. Let's confirm that everything works as it should. First of all, let's try the buttons out. Well, before I do, let me just hit the tab key to show you what happens. Now remember, we never put any code in here to process the tab key. You'll notice that by default, when we start up, the enlarge button is somehow highlighted. It's got a, a blue uh, border around it, whereas the shrink does not. If I push the tab, watch what happens. Then we move over to shrink. If I push it tab again, we go back and forth. Similarly, shift tab. Now there's only two items, so we aren't going to see much happen, but you, know, you might be familiar with this in GUI applications. The tab key usually navigates you from button to button to button, and the shift tab goes in the reverse. Well, we're getting that for free as part of what we get in Java FX, even though we don't specifically uh, look for that or act upon it in any way. It's still going to be the case that these buttons get um, selected automatically. Now, unfortunately, what doesn't happen, which you might have seen happen in some GUIs, is that when a button is highlighted that way, if you hit the Enter key, it normally invokes it. In this case, we don't get anything when we push the Enter key. See, I'm pushing the Enter key now, and it's not enlarging. If I push Tab, I'll go back to Shrink, but again, I can push Enter, and nothing happens. Uh, similarly, the left and right arrows, again, which we haven't programmed anything for, will still move this... Uh, highlighted button back and forth so this is what I'm pushing on right now is left right left or actually left right left right left right so that's an interesting thing now let's go ahead and, and use the demo the way it was really intended to so if we click on the mouse here and I'm clicking the right button and it's getting bigger and bigger actually pushing the buttons out of the way interestingly and I'm pushing the that was actually the left mouse button. Now this is the right mouse button and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Now you might th stop to think for a second if I click on a button I'm already doing a left click and if I do a left click it's supposed to get bigger anyway so is it getting bigger twice when I push on this button? Think about that for a second. Well the answer is no and the reason is, and I think I can give it away by moving over here, if I click here, I'm clicking right now, and you notice the circle's not changing. Why is that, do you suppose? Well, think carefully about the code. We've done right here a circle pane dot enlarge. It means the mouse click has to happen on the circle plane for the enlarge to take place, and the circle pane has been put in the border pane in the center section, there's no right, there's no left, there's no top, there's only center and bottom. So when I go down to the bottom, I'm not in the center of the border pane, and therefore I'm not on our circle pane. So that's why clicking here, here's a right click, left click, right clicks, left clicks, nothing happens. So when I'm in this area on the buttons, the buttons themselves are making the shrink and enlarge, not the mouse click. Right. On the other hand, when I move the cursor up into this area, then in anywhere in the center pane of the border or center area of the border pane, a left click is going to do this, and a right click is going to do this. So we've exercised most of the demo now, but we still have the up and down arrows. So let's try them out. So here's the up arrow, and here's the down arrow. So I can make it big and small with those arrows. Okay, um, I think that just about exhausts this demo then.